Come on, Jitsy. Live streaming is on. There we wow, go. I feel like we just went through the time warp. I think we're on. Let's uh I, are, we, are we live on the air? We are. Wow. Okay. I pushed, awesome. I pushed this button at Myco Live twice. So uh we'll see how that goes. But uh let's two go shows ahead. at once, twice the viewers. There we go. So here we go. Uh hello everyone. It's uh Tuesday, January 26, 2021. Uh, my name is Thomas Hunt, and this is Remembering Bitcoin Conferences with Mike Dupree. Uh, how's it going, Mike? I'm great, Thomas. How are you today? Looks like you're chilling there by the fire. You got some tea. You're all ready to go. Ready to rock and roll. And uh, I think Gideon's also here to join us. Yes, of course. Uh, in case uh, of a review from the blockchain hotel, I need to uh, attend this call also yes looking forward <laughs> well, very cool and let's let's check it out here here's a picture of the blockchain hotel in essen germany uh but first here's a little bit of the mad tour video from 2017 you can see here i think i was crossing the bridge into cologne germany now i'm in essen oh it's got narration i saw my friend jason king and I was trapped in an egg. It's trapped in an egg. Did you do this music yourself as well? Uh, this is open source free music, but hopefully free. But yeah, there's some of the crew they hanging out. Let me stay there. The food was included, and it was sweet. <laughs> ah, sweet. <laughs> this place where you get the egg chairs. <laughs> A robot made all of my coffee. I drank so many coffees. <laughs> this is the 2017 one, right? Yep. The conference was great fun. I even got to meet Theo. Yeah, Theo. <laughs> There's a good guy. Yeah. Is the roof here's my proof of roof pretty cool honey badger jacket i am the one who blocks and there's me with jason and theo and tone there's the buffet and the coffee machine <laughs> you love that coffee machine i was a big fan it has a little too much milk for me now but uh gosh the way it makes it automatically is quite something <laughs> Some impressive art there. I think this one's down in the basement somewhere. Got to really search to find it. There's a Barbie chandelier. <laughs> Lots of food pictures. That looks great. A lot of food pictures, right? <laughs> oh, that, that buffet was great, man. I love good German food. It's perfect. I, lo I love that buffet. There's a club we went to. There's another club we went to. I think that's the Temple Bar right there. Space. Yes, yes. The coffee machine again? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was Wasser for tea. Totally different than coffee. <laughs> you see all those pipes on the outside? You can send like a ball through all those pipes and it'll roll down. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. His tone making his speech. Pictures of old Essen. Uh, most of Essen's actually really new, like that building there. Uh, of course, it was uh, destroyed during the war, so they had to rebuild. Eric Benz, I saw just uh, Alejandro from Poulin right now. We are one. This was over from the nearby well, mall. It was a nearby mall. Pretty cool. Local art. <laughs> I say, say nearby mall in the, in the narration. <laughs> There's a carrot top collection there. Pretty nice mall. <laughs> and there's my room. <laughs> they made me uh they made me sleep by myself because I snored too I much. Had a great 
Yeah, he's getting I know that feeling. It was time to leave again. And I was off. Mindy. I was on my way. Uh, oh, yeah. Amsterdam. Molo. Amsterdam. Very cool. Very cool. So there's a little intro. Uh, we've also got this here. It was supposed to do the impressive animation. Let's try it one more time. Let's see if that will do it. Come on, Google. Make with the animation. No. Three, two, one, fail. Um, so there's Essen, Germany right there. Up in the north by Amsterdam, near Belgium. All the way. <laughs> Actually, it's the west of Germany, uh, as we uh, call it. Not the north. The north is uh, like Hamburg, Lübeck, etc. But anyway. Ah, the west. Did you do anything this year for a like a virtual conference or something? Uh, no, to be honest, um, you've been at this uh, location and you all remember that you can't stream the blockchain hotel uh, conference. In my, from my point of view, we, we, we thought about making some workshops uh, uh, via webinar, but this is also not the concept of the blockchain hotel. The concept is uh, bringing people together in an awesome atmosphere and uh, not hanging out on screens and uh, you know what I mean? And it certainly was. I mean, if you look at the photo on the screen now, it just there's probably, I don't know, a couple hundred of us. And man, it was it was really, really fun. I mean, we did some mining even. We uh drank lots of German beers, ate lots of sausages. Uh, it was yeah, absolutely uh, exceptional. Yeah, this is what I mean. You can't uh, uh, stream the spirit uh, that we have in this uh, place. And this is why we decided to skip, better skip the date instead of making some virtual stuff like everyone else is doing right now. Um, and I'm pretty sure when we start in maybe this end of this summer, uh, if co uh, the COVID stuff allows it, or maybe uh, uh, even 2020, uh, there will be, everybody will come back. Because yeah, we all, can't wait. wait for I'll, it. I'll for sure be there. <laughs> yes. So, uh, Gideon, uh, how did you start the Blockchain Hotel Conference? So, the conference itself, uh, the Blockchain Hotel itself, we started uh, five years ago. And the concept uh, uh, basically was to offer workshops uh, focused on blockchain Bitcoin technology, uh, um, newbie workshops for beginners, but also uh, developer uh, workshops, hackathons, meetups, etc. And... Um, after a short time, we found out that the conference is our uh, biggest, best part, what we have there, because um, we have, as, a, as you remember, um, they're a very nice place to bring people together. And um, this is the major, yeah, the major main, main idea behind it. And uh, where can you connect and network better than on this location? Yeah, and it's kind of like, uh, I think it's also halfway like a co-working space too, right? So I remember exactly. when I was there, there was other German people just kind of going about their day, eating and working and hanging out. And it seemed like there were some artists there as well. It's a really cool space. Exactly. The Blockchain Hotel itself is combined in the, with the Unperfect House. It's, uh, as you uh, said, kind of co-working space, artist space. We call it create creative, small creative city. There are around about 1,300 as far as I know, uh, artists from uh, all over the world, the most of them probably in Europe and Germany, etc. But um, they share their ateliers, music studios, etc. I mean, it's um, like four or five stories. It was really huge. I got yes, uh, around about the lost five, walking around and all the artists. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, of an, it's an old monastery and it's uh, 5,000 square meters around this. Really, really nice place. Really, really fun conference. I love that they serve beer at the front desk too. Nothing better <laughs> than after spending hours getting to the blockchain hotel, but being able to walk in and buy a beer with Bitcoin, uh, fresh German beer right out of the tap. That's absolutely love it. It was it was very cool. Like Mike said, seeing the, uh, the just normal German people from the town there. Uh, I was there one night and they were having like a board game night. And a whole bunch of people came in all to play board games and they're having a great time. And it seemed like a really nice community center for the local people as well. Really, really fun. Really, really, really fun uh, environment in general. Yeah, so, and uh, for, for the conference itself, it was uh, the idea to yeah host not another bullshit bingo buzzword conference, uh, better focus on the technical point of view from for the networking and for the community part of you. 
and this is where, where our main motivation is. What were the challenges in, in keeping the conference buzzword free? Was that difficult? Uh, yes, kind of difficult because sometimes projects look uh, from the pr first uh, moment they look legged and later the, you, they scam the people or whatever. It's not that easy, but um, we have a great team for an, uh, analyzing this and I think we are we were on a good way always. We had the one or the other guy on, or sponsor who's no longer existing. He's bankrupt uh, right now or stuff like this, but I think it was a good good mix. And uh, how about the, the local area? Have people uh, come into the blockchain hotel? Have they learned about Bitcoin? Do they go to the conference locally? Yes. Um, I would say around about 30% of the guests are uh, local uh, from the local area, including the North Rhine-Westphalia. You guys area. also, I think you host like monthly meetups there or something. I'm not sure if they're monthly, but I you keep inviting me. But unfortunately, it's always very <laughs> difficult during Corona to get all the way over to uh, uh, Essen. Yes, but, uh, I, know, I know that uh, we are completely closed, um, not only because Corona, also because uh, uh, an internal uh, rebuilding of stuff that we already planned since years. So uh, the, the owner of the building planned since years to uh, change some stuff internally. And this is what we do right now in these times where we anyway can't uh, open. Mm -hmm. And um, in addition to this, um, we hope that we can make the next event end of this summer. Awesome. I, uh, I hope Thomas will be back in town by then as well. And uh, if he's here, I'm sure we'll both join you. I mean, uh, that was uh, so we're talking about the 2017 conference right now, but I was there in the 2019 conference with Thomas as well. And man, that was absolutely amazing uh, time. It was very sentimental and kind of uh, friendly and uh, just kind of down to earth and fun. It was it's a it wasn't very preachy. <laughs> like the Bitcoin meetups in the early days ago at Room 77, you know what I mean? From this, uh, uh, yeah, basic thinking of uh, how to change the world and not making uh, just money with any ICO or stuff like this. It was already before this ICO bubble stuff. And yeah, this is very important for us. You can see right here an interview that Mike and I did right there on the roof. <laughs> this is one of my proof of work series. So we're probably talking about Mike's first computer. And yeah, I remember this. Yeah, absolutely. Bitcoin and stuff like that. So it's really cool uh, to be able to just shoot these up there on the roof. And it was uh, actually difficult because there was so much partying going on up on that roof. To find a quiet spot, we had to literally, uh, it took a minute of preparing. <laughs> absolutely. And it was great because so many people travel from all over the world. And if you come to a conference like this, you not only get a chance to meet them, but if you do interviews and videos like I do, you get a chance to actually record some of it and to put it into history. Uh, so it was pretty neat to, to get to interview Mike there. Uh, we also did, a, there's a Arnob right there, Tom Maccaro, uh, Agoda Miklos, uh, Felix, and looks like Trayvon Keith. So we did uh, about six interviews. These were all from 2019. Um, I actually just talked to Travin uh, today. Uh, I can't remember what we were talking about. I think he was trying to penetration test some of our ATM software, but uh, really cool guy as well. Yeah, you're yeah, really the most interesting people at these conferences. Like uh, Traven was uh, traveling all over, and I think he was trying to move to Switzerland. And uh, Felix had traveled the world on Bitcoin uh, very early uh, when it was very difficult to do that. Uh, so this is really the the kind of place that you'd meet these people. Uh, Gideon, is there anyone that you've met at the conference that you remember specifically? Uh, you mean at uh, the 2017 or in general? Either, either one. What? Just the highlights. Whoever the best, uh, most exciting people to meet were. Uh, to be honest, I can't uh, uh, don't know where to start. I'm Yotaki, of course. Jason King, uh, Oliver Flaskemper here from Bitcoin Germany. Uh, he's doing a lot for uh, the German speaking areas. Um, I, I myself need to go on the speakers list. Give me a second. <laughs> I'm working uh, with Amir now in Barcelona to try to create this academy that he's trying to build forever. So it's a cool. very slow work in process, but uh, hopefully someday we'll have it online. Perfect. Uh, we had Eddie Travia. And, oh, uh, I love Eddie. He's a Mid great guy. And of course, Liberland uh, attended, I think, every conference we ever made. Um, 
So uh, this Mr. Also President happened. Vitt was uh, in personal attendance. I remember he, he came in kind of late and was there just to speak real quickly. And then he had, uh, I can't remember where he was off to, I think to Austria or something to speak somewhere else. But uh, yeah, at least in 2019, I remember he stopped by really, really quickly. But uh, always great to see Vitt. Yeah, maybe it was uh, one of the years he came two or three days earlier just to uh, use the time uh, to work at the co-working space because he remembered from the last year that uh, it's a very nice place to work. We also had Jörg Platzer, of course. He's a legend in German uh, Bitcoin uh, community. Marshall Long, very old school Bitcoin miner. Yeah. The whole uh, Bitwala team, not the whole team, sorry. Ben Jones was there. And yeah, only to say some names. Theo Goodman, of course, is a very uh, welcome a uh, very nice guest that we uh, are looking forward to uh, every time when he's attending. So you did so you, one conference in 2017. Yeah. Did you do one in 2018 too? Or you yes. did 2017 and then 2019? We have we had the first one in 17, then 18, then 19, then COVID stops our plans for the 2020. That's and, been the uh, problem in Barcelona too with the academy. It's just uh, impossible to get people together right now. I can also uh, call the name Dominic Wald from Bitcoin Vietnam also. Oh, yeah. He uh, works with me on some of the ATM stuff. Really good guy Perfect. as well. Yes. Uh, Felix Weiss, the Bitcoin traveler, also attended more than two times, I think. Cool. Yeah. So you another. think maybe by the end of the summer, if they get the corona cleaned up a little bit, you're going to be able to host something else? And we give our best. Together? Trust me, we have, it, we have it all in our pocket, you know, uh, in case it's possible, uh, we can just uh, uh, put it on the table and start. What are we looking forward with these renovations in the blockchain hotel? What are you What are you guys doing over there? Um, it will be more. Uh, yeah, how can I explain in English? Um, not Not more. That's much smaller rooms. We okay. uh, kill some walls. Or for the artists, or yeah, it's a bit more open right now. You will see. You will like it. It's a Very kind cool. of concept. It's con uh, kind of uh, there is one part where everybody can can enter uh, the restaurant, for example, without paying any uh, entrance, and there is a kind of club uh, 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 um, club members area where it, uh, only the people who are in this uh, unperfect house club or even for a small amount for one time uh, uh, visit can. Right. I remember this last time. So for those that weren't there, uh, it was really cool. You would pay for a wristband. I think it was like 12 euros a day or something. I don't remember exactly, but they had all the time. I think in German, they call it like a smorgasbord or something, but there was this huge uh, buffet of sausages and salads. And it's really nice, man, because uh, if you're just hanging out all day and you're having some beers and sometimes there was uh, some smoke going on and you get a little snack uh attitude and oh man it was absolutely lovely so i don't remember exactly what it cost but you had a little wristband you could go there it depends on what long you exactly what, what the but the uh, uh, pr uh, pr premium uh, ticket or how can i call it it's uh, 20 bucks for the whole day including food wifey uh, a place to work on the rooftop or wherever you want. Uh, coffee flat, of course, very important if you go there for working. You can go there with your team, make a yeah group work there. Uh, just you can also rent a room for the whole day, um, just to make safe that uh, you have your privacy, for example. Um, and you can stay there with Bitcoin. I paid for Bitcoin for my room, and it was a very nice hotel and such. And uh, yeah, it was very nice. You can also book it uh, over Traveler. I think there is one of these uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, accepting, crypto accepting booking platforms um, where we are also listed. But right now, of course, as I said, nothing to book. <laughs> Did you want to briefly uh, talk a little bit about the uh, the new Bitcoin Castle project you're working on? Um, it's a very, very early state. But uh, of course, I will update you as uh, the first person's uh, as far as where we have something that is concrete. What I can say right now, it will be amazing. And if you think Blockchain Hotel is cool, then come to the castle. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I know that I met Gideon one time. One of the first times I met him in person was at the Bitcoin Castle in Estonia at Risto's place. And uh, that was uh, quite a few years ago. So it's I um, always have these castle things on my radar. And we'd absolutely love to hear more about that when you're ready to uh, share more information.
So what I can tell right now, it's uh, uh, we have some project titles uh, from uh, Smart Castle to Crypto Castle to uh, uh, Open Source Castle. Anything like this, uh, imagine yourself what this could be and uh, give, give us some time to uh, finalize the details. Well, very excited about it. Yeah, it's pretty fun just to uh, Google Bitcoin Castle here on uh, the old Google. Here's, uh, like uh, Mike was saying, here's Risto. And this was his plans. Uh, this was a while ago. This was in 2014, September. Uh, he was uh, buying and building a castle in Estonia. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was a very cool, uh, classic Bitcoin castle project uh, by Risto. And then, of course, yeah. the, the other popular one of his is, of course, Jeremy Gardner's uh, Crypto Castle in San Francisco. Yeah, it's, I've heard of that one, too. It's it's funny for me to look at this. And, and you know, Jeremy's doing pretty well now. I saw him hanging out with Tony Hawk for his birthday. Um, but I look at these and I was like, I slept there. <laughs> I slept on the couch at Crypto Castle. Uh, so it's really fun, at least the one in San Francisco. Um, Gideon, uh, just generally, you don't have to tell us the address or anything because you'd worry about me uh, on my way out there. Uh, but where where is this castle located? Like like what country? Uh, it's next to Halle, in the center of Germany, more or less. Um, it's a two hours trip from or two and a half hours trip from Berlin, from uh, Leipzig is one hour. And uh, it calls right now Burg Scheidungen. You can Google it, of course. It's not a, a secret. Is, but, it, uh, is it in the but, Black Forest? Sorry? Is it in the Black Forest? No, 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 no. It's uh, in the wine area. The Schwarze Bog. No, no Schwarzwald, no. Schwarzwald. Is there going to be blockchain hotel wine? It's in the vineyards? Um, it's it's one of our topics on the list, yes, but not the priority right now. Well, send, also, me a, send me a memo when you guys get started on that project. We'll we bring also, Paul Chu over and get it started. We thought about <laughs> making castle cheese, just uh, making the seller of the castle uh, premium cheese. But anyway, it's not a priority like the wine. <laughs> <laughs> wine first, cheese later. Yes, exactly. Well, that's very cool. I've, I've been looking for an excuse to go to the center of Germany. I, obviously, I don't live in Germany. I don't know much about it, but it seems like I always seem to go to the outside of this ring that goes around the center. And I've been to Essen, and I've been to Berlin, and I've been to Ravensburg over in the, the lower left-hand corner. Uh, but no, I've never had a reason to go to the center. And I wonder if, if there's something there, like a really cool forest, or if it's uh, very nature -y and nice, or there's some reason they're keeping me away from the center of Germany. So I don't know if it's possible too, but we sent some photos of the mining that we did at the 2019 uh, proof of roof conference, a little bit different kind of mining, but there was a local coal mine there where we all went and uh, took a little train and went down to the bottom of it. And actually I've still got a bag of coal kicking around here somewhere that we uh, mined ourselves. <laughs> Let's see. I think I have some of those um, pictures here. We're not very organized with the pictures. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay, it goes full screen. It's totally doable. Hey, look. And so I didn't go on this uh, adventure into the mine, Mike. So why don't you uh, tell us about it? What was going on? What did you guys do down here? Oh, it was pretty cool. I think Gideon took about uh, maybe 20 of us or 30 of us. I think it was like an after event uh, event. And we, uh, we all went down into a coal mine there in Essen. And they showed us how they mine coal, and we rode around on the little train cars and stuff. And uh, it was pretty cool, man. It was, uh, yeah. Gideon, do you have a little better intro to the coal mine than that? Uh, to be honest, not really. I also only have this information from, from this trip uh, because, because I was not born in this area. Um, but uh, what I can say is that the idea behind it was to show the history of mining and uh, how it was in the past and uh, how mining uh, was changed. And um, I think it was interesting, but the main issue, the main uh, wrong decision we made is to do it on the Sunday after the conference. <laughs> and this is why only, I think, 15 or 20 people uh, joined this. Everybody was a little bit hung over. I was, can remember the guy at the mine you know, actually had a beer with us, though. So that was pretty classic. And you know what? It was still fun. I mean, uh, especially when you look at these pictures, everybody all dressed up, having a good time. This was really kind of what your conference was about. It wasn't about uh, speeches and lectures and uh, people selling things, but just about communities and people getting together and uh you know, I, everybody was a little hungover on this trip, but it was definitely uh, worth doing, man. I, yeah, really cool. 
Yeah, it was funny, definitely. One of the guys uh, fell to sleep, uh, as we said there. But anyway, <laughs> it's it's fun to see this connection between Bitcoin and uh, real mining. I'm not sure how it's happening, but uh, when I went to the conference in Romania at the Transylvania Crypto Conference, they took us to a nearby salt mine, and it was more of a tourist attraction. Now it's not a working mine. I don't think it ever worked. I think they got it done and they they closed it. Uh, but it's just so interesting to go to these strange underground places. Let's see. Try to get the audio out of there. Uh, but, oh, there you can see the actual the mining machine. Like the yeah, and then they gave us each one little bag of coal. Mine's downstairs, unfortunately, but uh, they gave us a little bag of coal each that they mined right in front of us. It was it was really cool, man. The oh, guys were really friendly too. Yeah, this is like a working mine. This is very different. The one I, I saw in Romania, well, first it was a salt mine, so very different uh, goals and such. Um, but they had dug it all out, and it was this incredible, gigantic underground cavern. Um, but by the time they finished it, uh, we had better and easier and, and, of course, cheaper ways of making salt. <laughs> so they didn't need uh, the giant salt mine they'd spent all this time building. And uh, but this, this one's active. So this is a totally different type of mine. Uh, so let's see what else we've got. Uh, Rita sent us a lot of pictures. Let's go back through them, see if we can find anything cool. Also, uh, but- a little earlier, Mike, you mentioned Lieberland. And I was just thinking for the audience, we have a lot of new people uh, these days. Uh, maybe you could just tell them really briefly what Lieberland is. Yeah, sure. I'm one of the uh, diplomatic passport holders of Lieberland. So I'm one of the ambassadors for Spain. And Liberland is essentially, it's a small island between Serbia and Croatia on the Danube uh, River. And it's a libertarian island. We have a few hundred passport holders and I think a few thousand citizens at this point. But nobody actually lives there. It's more of just a community. We're at all the Bitcoin and all the crypto conferences and such. And uh, it's really cool stuff, though. So I I recommend uh, I got their flag hanging on my wall downstairs and such. And you can meet our president, uh, Mr. Vitt, almost at uh, every major Bitcoin conference or uh, libertarian or anarchy conference in the world. So, yeah, uh, really cool stuff. Check out Lieberland if you're not sure what it is. Yes, it's a very cool idea. And Lieberland's one of those things where the libertarians put their money where their mouth is. They want to start a new country. They want to start a new government. They have a very small strip of land in between, uh, I want to say Serbia, Bosnia, something like that. Serbia and Croatia, yeah, on the Danube River. So yeah, there's two warring countries and they didn't want this little piece of land in the river. And I guess they bomb it sometimes. Uh, but these libertarians have moved in and adopted it, and they have, like Mike saying, it's kind that. of like a swamp land. Nobody really came, claimed it, so they have this kind of uh, under whatever kind of treaty law or whatever. If something's not claimed, you can claim it, but you have to get whatever residents are there. I think like over seventy-five percent of them or something to agree to let you take the land. And there was one guy living there, and I think he was a Croatian. I uh, don't quote me on that, but. Anyways, Lieberland gave him some money or something, and uh, he agreed. So then we said that it's our own country. And he died actually a couple of years ago, uh, rest in peace and such. So, uh, but yeah, so there's no one actually living in Lieberland, and it's kind of swamp land that nobody wants, but uh, really cool community and group of people. And going out there and riding around on the boats and everything is always fun. So uh, if you don't know about Lieberland, please check it out. I think it's Lieberland.com or Lieber, just Google Lieberland. You can see right here, here's like Mike was saying, here's a picture of President Vitt uh, talking about Lieberland at the Blockchain Hotel Conference. So it all comes together right here. So Lieberland's uh, now like six years old, I think, even. As you can see there on the photo with uh, Vitt, uh, uh, this is also a very important uh, thing for us. We have not uh, this, uh, yeah, this two parts of people at the conference. It's all eye on eye level. So in this case, for example, you just can go through uh, uh, after the talk to Vit and talk to him directly. There is no big stage with VIP areas, etc. I think this is also one of the points why people love the blockchain hotel so much. Yeah, everybody got to know everybody. I mean, I spent probably 90% of my time uh, just sitting up on the roof. And if you miss someone's uh, speech or lecture or something down in the uh, where they were doing the talks, uh, you could just sit down with them and have a beer and uh, 
they just one on one tell you what they're up to and what's going on. Exactly. Very, like very, one, great big, one big living room, one big family like this. Well, and I think the the food helps out a lot because I I ate most of my meals at the blockchain hotel. So if somebody wanted to come sit down down next to me or have a chat or whatever, I'm there. And it wasn't just me. It was also like Gideon saying the speakers were there as well. You could hang out with Tone. You could hang out with Vit. All of these guys just hung around at the conference, and it did feel very flat. I've been very other- homey. There was lots of beer. There was lots of great food, and there was something smelly in the smoke in the air. But yeah, too many conferences. You go to them, and the VIPs hang out in the VIP room with the other VIPs, and you see them when they come and they go, and you wave. And uh, nah, not 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 at all at Gideon's. This was uh, at the Blockchain Hotel. It was very personal. You got to know everybody. I think probably I don't know was there a couple hundred people there. I probably at some point sat and had a beer or talked to every single person there for at least five minutes. I don't. I, yeah, very 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 uh, community. Yeah, thank you. This is what uh, uh, is our, our target also. Well, you see here is uh, Gokan talking to Vit. And uh, you can see Theo in the background. Uh, Rita sent it. Ah, oh, they just broke. Come on, pictures. You were working so well. Uh, but here's Rita and Mike right here. Uh, <laughs> Rita, Rita sent in all these pictures, and they're making me nostalgic here, man. There's me and Mike. Love. It was a really good conference, man. Of maybe the 50 plus conferences I've been to, this was definitely one of the uh, one of the better ones. And the good food, the good beer, and just everybody staying in the same place really worked out well. And you just look around and, and you know all these people. You know, there's a Traven, there's Veronica, there's Gokin again. I mean, it's just uh, there's Pavel from uh, the uh, what's it called? Uh, Parallel yeah. Poles. Yeah. HCPP, yes. In Prague. So, uh, very cool guy. We got to chat with him. I think I was on this panel. Um, so, yeah, it's just a very down to earth, uh, you know, not out of control conference. Um, no alt. I coin. think, yeah. I think part of what makes it cool is that Essen's. A little bit difficult to get to it's kind of in the middle of nowhere so you don't get a bunch of just general people showing up like you only get people who can take uh you know a few days to go there or maybe even a week to uh to attend so it, it really uh it's not just giant i mean uh yeah there's the whole crowd i think i probably talked to almost 90 percent of those people one-on-one uh really fun Uh, yeah, the Essen itself, the city is not that not that, not that huge. I, I think around 60k uh, uh, people living there. But uh, North North Rhine Westphalia, including Cologne, uh, uh, etc., is a, in, uh, in general one big city. So it's not like uh, you have to drive to another city and uh, it takes you 15 uh, uh, one hour. Uh, the cities are directly connected to each other. So from satellites, it looks like one big city. It's not in the middle of nowhere. This is what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. Well, well, all I meant is it seemed like it, it wasn't a general conference where there was just tons of random people. It, it seemed like a really good, uh, like a lot of people came there. A lot of people came before and stayed after. And it was a really Yes, yes. This is why, it, really uh, why it's, uh, uh, this is also the point that I said. It uh, feels good to stay there and uh, having just a good time on the rooftop, etc. I ended up missing, I think, two or three flights. And then finally I went with Jose over to his house. Uh, one of the crown guys, uh, like uh, I just could not leave Germany. Like it, I, I was, yeah, it, I didn't want to go. It was one of those events where it was just like, I, I want to stay forever. And, and one, like, more, one more reason to do it again. There you go. <laughs> and like Gideon was saying, it is very accessible. Um, my first time in Europe, I went to Essen and blockchain hotel from Paris. I took a very fast train. It was really cool. And uh, then the other time, I think I came there from Amsterdam. And it wasn't far from Amsterdam. It was like a reasonable bus ride, uh, like just a couple hours. Yes. Right. There is this connection to Paris directly. There is a connection to Berlin, to, of course, Amsterdam, um, Switzerland, Netherlands. Uh, It's all very easy to uh, accessible. All the all the best places and all the places that I can't go right now. <laughs> but uh, we've got some more pictures for you here. Um, this is when I was traveling to Essen in 2017. And of course, I was really excited because I'd never been to Europe before. So I took way too many pictures. So apologies in advance. 
Uh, here's one I wanted to show. This was something I think, uh, yeah, Philippe signed it. Philippe put this together. It's a no 2X. I ain't afraid of no fork. And uh, at the time this came out, I had just been to Paris and I went to the Breaking Bitcoin conference in Paris. And uh, hopefully we'll talk about that conference soon here on this show. Uh, it was in Paris. It was in Amsterdam. I got to go a couple of times. Uh, but everyone at that conference was all about no 2X. And I don't think anyone coordinated it. Nobody talked about it beforehand. But just every single presentation, uh, the guy would go through his stuff and he's talking about tech. And then he'd say, by the way, I'm against this 2X thing. We don't need it. So it was really neat to see the community come together and to come together in person uh, against no 2X. So here it is. I'm getting on that fast train. I'm going to go to Essen. And my computer is scrolling out. It says no more pictures for you. So oh. bad, bad computer, too much running. Uh, Mike, how, how did you get to Essen? Did you uh, fly there? Did you take a train? I think we flew into uh, Frankfurt or something random and then took trains around. We kept, we were trying to meet up with like a dozen different people during that couple of weeks. It was a great time. I, I, I was surprised we ever made it out of there. I, I missed at least two or three flights. We just wanted to stay forever. Here we go. Photos are rolling again. This is the train station in Paris. Uh, so we're making our way to Essen. I was reading the David Letterman uh, late night book at the time. Now, this was really neat. Like I said, it was a really fast train, and I meant that. Uh, this is, we were going 120 kilometers per hour, I think. This might be kilometers. Uh, but we were really booking. And uh, you could kind of feel it on the train. Like, you could feel the Gs. I don't think I've been on a train that fast. Our trains here in the U.S. suck. Uh, these are my pictures of Belgium. I, I uh, but if you, if you ask any German citizen, they will also say uh, German Deutsche Bahn also sucks. The trains here are always too late, etc. Um, it's not very German, uh, the trains here. <laughs> I like the Austrian train company the best. The problem is the trains are too expensive now, man. Like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you could take trains and like there's a bar car and you can hang out and meet people. And now you go to take a train, it's like 150 euro to take a 12 hour train. Yeah, especially in Germany, I think it's because all these processes are very, very old. Sometimes I still think they, they send faxes to confirm stuff, uh, you know what I mean? And, uh, or letters. <laughs> and uh, this is why it takes so long. And it's a huge company and a very old company with, uh, yeah, not the freshest minds in the uh, 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 um, leadership. Okay, Deutsche Bahn, yeah. What's, what's yeah, so yeah. funny is that the British also complain about their trains and they privatized them recently. But here in the US, we don't even have any trains to complain about. So it's a whole nother world when you just don't have it. Have you guys watched Planes, Trains, and Automobiles with John Candy? What his uh, quote in there is the trains are great because all the motion, it makes the women really horny. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep <laughs> pull, man. That's a deep pull, Mike. <laughs> that is, but yeah, here's a cool picture. This was Pure Energy Con Tiger. And it has a special sign that says plus caffeine. So, and here's yeah, you, you, you need to describe, uh, you need to uh, uh, make a sign in Germany. Like when we sell alcohol, it's the same. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the tiger looks like it would have caffeine. Like I believe in the tiger. But yeah, I think I had to try that one just to see what Tiger drink um, tasted it, like. It tastes ugly like every other, other energy drink <laughs> also. <laughs> yeah, they had some in, um, when we were in Prague, they had ones in the store that were called Semtex, like the explosive Semtech. And uh, I didn't try them, but gosh. In what Prague a, for, what do you mean, for HCPP? Yeah, for HCPP. Here's, we, we should invite Gideon on when we do the uh, show about HCPP. Absolutely, man. We'd love to have you back for that. So uh, let's also invite Pavel. It makes sense. He can yeah, also yeah, explain absolutely. what happens in the future with HCPP. There are some major changes are going on. I can't talk about it right now. But um, he, he also was already at the castle and we are having some nice ideas for the future. Let's say it like this. Very, very cool. And whenever you guys can and you uh, can let us know more about what's going on there, uh, let us know and we'll do another show just about it because uh, I've, I've talked to you a little bit about the castle privately I over the last to. few months and uh, it's very, very exciting stuff. And uh, yeah, very, very exciting. 
We especially like to see pictures of that castle. I don't want to spoil anything. To anybody, but I've seen a few on Facebook, and it is a nice looking castle. So. Exactly, and uh, uh, you see, you just saw ten percent of it. Let's say it this way. <laughs> I want to talk about this picture before we move on. Uh, here's my friend Jason King. Uh, Jason oh. worked with Sean's Outpost in Florida to feed homeless people and give them a place to live with Bitcoin. And I know also, Jason. I think he lived in Colorado for a bit. Maybe. And he also worked on Unsung, and they were trying to give away like old restaurant meals and uh, food that people didn't want and give that to the homeless. So Jason's a really big uh, promoter of Bitcoin and helps. Is, is it Bit Give his thing or what's his? No, that, that's uh, the uh, un Unsung and Sean's Outpost. Sean's Outpost. Yeah, that's right. I'm not sure what he's doing these days, but it was really great when I got to. Uh, Germany and I was kind of all alone on the train from Paris and all alone in a big country and I got there and Jason was there and he was so happy to see me and, and we'd met a couple times before and it was just so great to, to see somebody you know far away from home and uh, it was just great to see Jason at, at a blockchain hotel so one, one of my best memories there was just you love those egg chairs man jeez I had some fun with well I never no one ever let me sat in one before so I had to make the most of it uh, but yeah, here's some of the crew from England, uh, renegade investor there, uh, an Indian there. Um, that's the, uh, is that the guy from Factum? I, I know that guy in the middle too. I forget where he's from, but uh, just a lot of crew and everybody hanging out over at the mall. Uh, they had a five guys coming in. I imagine it's there. They also said they were hiring. So I always try to you know, keep track of these things for the future. Are you like trying to get sponsored here or something? This is uh, Thomas uh, Huntsfield. His guests are Five Guys target audience. I, I think <laughs> I, could, I could work at Five Guys or, or I, could be sub, I could work at Subway. I could be a sandwich artist. It's actually kind of ironic because when I was in um, Essen, one of the other German guys was very adamant about very special hamburgers. And he took me to a few different places for like really good hamburgers. So it's a, uh, it's a bigger thing than you'd think in Germany, really good hamburgers. Uh, yeah. It's uh, difficult to get really good hamburgers uh, because uh, there are a lot of this franchise bullshit uh, uh, standard uh, 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 shops here. But uh, if you, if you have a, 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 a little bit of experience with burgers, you can find one. <laughs> yeah. Now, absolutely. what about Hamburg? Do they have good burgers in Hamburg? No, no, no. <laughs> they, 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 they have fish and chips. Uh, fish and chips. You're, you're, uh, you're ruining my visions here. What about Frankfurt? Do they have good Frankfurters? Uh, yes, uh, there is exactly a sausage, sausage that uh, has this name. And... Uh, it's. I think it's from this area, but I'm not sure. I'm not a Frankfurt expert. It's funny when and I, I'm also not a sausage expert. <laughs> when I went to Frankfurt, it was all um, banks. It was all giant skyscrapers full of bankers. Of uh, course, the uh, Central European uh, uh, Bank is there. Based, they built a very, very huge building. Like uh, looks like Mordor from a uh, lot of the rings. Uh, it on, you only need to add an eye on, uh, on the top of it and then, then you have the Mordor uh, <laughs> uh, door. <laughs> they have one of those in London too. <laughs> you know up. what I'd like to see, Gideon, is once things get opened up again, let's try to do an Oktoberfest party. Uh, I don't think there will be an Oktoberfest this year because... Uh, in no, I mean, Bavaria, once everything's open again, maybe next year or whatever. Yeah, of course. When but I think that could be really fun. Like I, I had a great time at Oktoberfest. Uh, I trust you. Yeah. It's uh, always uh, escalation pool. Yes. <laughs> Here's some uh, old friends of ours we haven't seen in a while because no one can travel. There's Alejandro, a good guy. And of course, uh, Eric Benz, like you guys were saying earlier, there's Benz making a speech. Uh, crypto pay at the time. So very cool mm. stuff. <laughs> Who's this guy? <laughs> oh. Tone Vase, I've heard of that guy. Everything instead of Bitcoin is a scam. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Here's some photos from the roof. Here's a panorama of the roof. You can see the whole thing. Like Gideon said, uh, they have a proof of roof thing. And uh, one of the neat things about the conference is you can go up on the roof and uh, eat your dinner. Or uh, they had a little speeches up there uh, the second time. And uh, it's really nice. It's an interesting... Uh, Looking out from this roof, you can see that large bank building there. 
Uh, I think they only moved the speeches up to the roof because they were having talks downstairs and everybody was on the roof in the sun hanging out and having a beer. (laughs) All right, we'll bring the speaker upstairs then. (laughs) Where the people are. Why not? (laughs) So here's over at the mall. Had some uh, public art statues there. Carrot Top Crew. (laughs) It was funny. Oh, this was pretty neat. These are. uh, LCD uh, price tags. So if you want to change the price on everything in the store, you can just update it. uh, So Thomas, what were you doing at the mall all this time while the conference was going on? Well, the the conference is right across the street from the mall. So I don't remember ever going to the mall. I don't know what you like. Thomas is like, all right, conference is going on. I'm going to go to the shopping mall across the street. All of my pictures pictures of signs. you You saw my Miami pictures. I went straight to the beach. (laughs) <laughs> I, the conference the conference gets you there then you try to go around and see what else they've got so oh, you were at the mall looking for chicks i know what was going on there wasn't enough chicks at gdn's conference for you not enough but maybe, <laughs> maybe next time maybe there was there, there was a fair amount of girls actually uh in in gdn's Did defense someone... i would say there was a fair amount of girls at the conference we Did tried you... to get sarah to join but she was too busy today Well, I think we're about out of stuff. Um, I mean, I can play some videos and stuff, but uh, what else do no. we talk about? It, the future of Blockchain Hotel, Gideon, you're, you're coming back <clears> strong. Yeah, as, 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 as soon as possible, and the restrictions I will allow it to handle it at our location with more than 10 people, for example, in the Winter Garden. You know, they have sometimes they have this uh, 10 square meters each person uh, uh, rule, and then we, of course, can't host, uh, host a conference there. <laughs> Um, but uh, in case there are, there is any solution, like uh, for example, keeping distance, wear a mask, or whatever, we uh, try to realize it. In worst case, next year we skip this summer again. It hurts very much because uh, it's also a part of. At our least heart. you're making good use of the time, though. You said you're doing some renovations and stuff, so, uh, so uh, it's not exactly. like completely wasted time. Uh, yeah. Things to look forward to. Exactly. This is why we use this time for now or to yeah, make it to a better place, hopefully. All right. And uh, where can people check out Blockchain Hotel? Where, where can they sign up for next year's conference? I think on blockchainhotel.de, just click around on the conference or uh, uh, there is also a newsletter available. There is, uh, we are uh, not that much active, but we are also on Twitter, um, Facebook, etc., and uh, just follow us. Uh, we will keep you in the loop, of course, as soon as we know some final uh, decisions. For you have uh, to send Jiddy in one box of sausages, and he sends you one ticket. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Also, I want to give a, a shout out to Ed in the chat. Ed says, "I wish I was sitting on the rooftop sipping a cold beer with you lads." So. Much Looking this- forward to it. As soon as yep. the next uh, blockchain hotel events on, count me in and let's have that beer together. Let's all let's all get this vaccine. Let's beat this COVID thing, and then we can whatever hang out. Whatever we need to do to make it real to get there again. Yes, that's the plan. All right, uh, Mike. Anything you want to say in closing? No, Jiddy, uh, and thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate. Uh, it's good to see you. Good to talk to you. I'm sorry yeah. for the late notice. Stuff. We're still trying to organize this show and hopefully getting a little bit better each week, but really, really appreciate it. And maybe uh, you can join us again when we do the HCPP uh, version. Exactly. And from my side, I love to make another talk about the crypto castle future with uh, our CEO also uh, on board in the, in the, uh, uh, in the talk. Kirsten. That would be excellent. As soon as you guys have information you're ready to share, let us know and we'll <clears> schedule <throat> that in and get going. So maybe in two or three, uh, two or four, four weeks, something like this. Yeah, awesome. Get, get all your photos together, and we're we're glad to talk about it, and we're glad to talk about it again in the future when you have an event or something to announce. So just uh, awesome. keep it in the loop. And uh, thanks to everybody for watching. It Thank home. you very much. Give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe down below. Uh, I think we're on all the platforms. I hope that it worked. I kind of pushed uh, both buttons, so we're streaming twice. And I don't know that that might have killed both streams but we'll see how that turns out i'm gonna go review it uh but jidian thanks again for joining us i've known jidian for five or six years now he was one of the pioneers in the bitcoin atm space actually over in uh, germany i bought a couple atms from him 
many years ago. That's how I first met him. And one of our good friends is now deceased, but uh, yeah, like uh, Gideon, really, really great to, to talk to you. And thanks for, yeah. Thanks for joining. Uh, thank you guys. You're great. And, and Gideon, keep did anyone, uh, moving forward. Did anyone give you permission to run this conference? Did Satoshi Nakamoto tell you you had to run this conference? Um, uh, I had a dream, a lucid dream, and uh, there I got this message from him, yes. All right. <laughs> I was going for, like, anybody can start a conference. Anybody can start a meetup. I'm just suggesting everybody in your local area to get together with your Bitcoiners. Of course, it's a tough time right now. So, so get- this, is, this is how it all started. In 2013, we started the first uh, Bitcoin meetup in a bar, and there were four people, including the host of me and Gökhan. <laughs> so <laughs> this is how it looks like. Uh, uh, it looked like early days ago. And for um, anybody listening, uh, these days there's a lot more people. Look on meetup.com. Look on Facebook groups. You will find in almost every community in the world that there are Bitcoin meetups and cryptocurrency meetups, and there is a community. So if you're sitting at home and you don't know how to get involved, even during Corona, look on meetup.com. Look on Facebook. There are other people like you hanging out doing crypto. So try to find some other people in your local area. It's a great thing. I think people who want to enter the space uh, shouldn't have an issue. Uh, the internet is full, fully loaded with stuff uh, about it. So, but Yeah, that's it's, that's much the way our meetup started in Sacramento, Gideon. It was me and my brother and this other yeah. Was and right. then we called it and then we called it meetup. <laughs> we it. sat in a bar with four people. <laughs> we got the pizza, we got the beer, we talked that about was the same before. as the first Macau meetup was Eddie and I and one of my assistants and uh one other guy, and it was the four of us just sitting in a bar, and that was the Macau meetup. I mean, it was the same thing in Amsterdam with the uh uh the, the guy from Pika Pay. I can't yeah, I can't Richard. With his meetup, the first meetup was like five of us in a bar, and now it's like hundreds of people a month. But I don't know what happened to him. I, I haven't heard from him recently. I have to check in eventually. Yes. Anyway, uh, Michael, Thomas, thank you for your time. And uh, looking forward to uh, talk again about Crypto Castle or the whatever, or HTTP. Uh, well, you're going to join in. us. Uh, we'll know first here on uh, World Crypto Network as soon as you have some real news on the Bitcoin Castle, right? Okay, I will ask. Uh, you're going to give us a story. <laughs> in, case, in case you want to make this review from HCPP history, uh, I will activate Pavel for this talk. Excellent. Sounds perfect. All right, Gideon, thank you so much. Uh, oh, sorry, Thomas Hunt, go ahead. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Just until next time. Bye.